what's up with everyone? And welcome back to another thrilling installment of the most expensive and rare American coins. Today's topic is an uncommon penny error that can have a value in the hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Because so many 2,000 Lincoln pennies were produced, it's likely that you were unaware that they even existed. That increases your chances of coming upon this unusual jewel significantly. The historical background of this coin's creation and the reasons behind its significance in American numismatic history will be discussed in this video. We will also go through any unique qualities, collector's significance, and the possible value if you are lucky enough to find or possess a genuine, for instance. I would really appreciate it if you guys gave it a thumbs up before I started. If you're new, please subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you can watch my new videos as they are posted. If you would like to know the approximate value of this coin, or if you just chance to come across one, make sure to watch all the way through the video. What say we dive right in and talk about the 2000 wide M Lincoln penny then, without further ado? Guys, let's get it. In the field of numismatics, the 2000 wide M penny air is a unique aberration that is distinguished by noticeable variance in the way the letters A and M are arranged in the phrase America. On the other hand, the broad AM variety shows a noticeable space between the two letters, in contrast to its more popular cousin, the close AM variety, where the letters A and M are closely spaced and almost touching. This minor but noteworthy divergence has drawn the interest of enthusiasts and collectors alike, making the broad AM variation a sought-after gem in the world of numismatics. Now, the broad AM variant differs from the other varieties not only in the greater distance between the letters A and M in America, but also in the placement of the initials FG close to the Lincoln Memorial on the other side of the corner, as opposed to the the broad AM variety has these initials nearer the memorial than the close AM variety, which has the initials FG farther away from it. The wide AM penny air becomes more intriguing and intricate because to this twofold distinction which piques people's interest and arouses their desire. Now, the U.S. Mint's manufacturing procedure from 2000 is where the wide AM penny air first appeared. Experts disagree on the precise reason of this variance, but it is thought to result from minor variations in the minting colors used to produce the Lincoln Memorial that year. Changes in the striking pressure, die alignment, and other elements could have led to the development of the broad AM variant, which led to a small quantity of coins with this unique defect. The 2000 broad AM penny era has become a sought-after item for collectors looking to complete their collections or add a distinctive piece to their portfolio because of its scarcity and the mystery surrounding its creation. This variety's unique visual qualities and scarcity have brought it to the forefront of numismatic interest, increasing its value and demand. Because of this, Collectors are fighting for the chance to own these elusive jewels, and specimens of the vast AM variation on the 2,000 Lincoln pennies fetch premium rates in the numismatic marketplace. Not only is this large AM cent miscalculation valuable financially, but it also serves as evidence of the complexities involved in minting coins and the sporadic irregularities that occur during the production process. Each specimen offers a window into the intricacies of minting technology and the creativity required to create these diminutive yet exquisite pieces of art, representing a distinct period in the history of American coinage. The 2000-wide Am Penny Air continues to pique the interest of collectors and enthusiasts throughout the world, whether they regard it as a rare item or as a representation of the unpredictable nature of coin manufacture. Once more, you want to look at the placement of the letters A and M in the word America on the reverse side of the coin in order to determine the wide AM variant. Regarding the broad AM range, the placement, compared to the close AM variant, the letters A and M should be placed significantly farther apart. On the other side of the coin, you should also consider where the initials FG are located in relation to the Lincoln Memorial. In contrast to the close AM variety, which has the initials FG placed farther away from the memorial, the broad AM variety of coins should have the initials FG close to the Lincoln Memorial building on the reverse side. Victor David Brenner and Frank Gasparro created and engraved the 2000 Lincoln Memorial pennies. Now, before we go into the value, let's go over some of the specifics and specifications. They weigh, have a diameter of 19.00 and a plain edge. 
2.50 grams in weight. The 2000 Philadelphia Lincoln Memorial fragrance has an incredibly high mintage figure of 5,503,200,000 total. You are now searching for the broad AM variety of Philadelphia mint pennies. These are made of copper-plated zinc and do not actually carry a mint mark for the year 2000. Now regarding the value of this coin, you won't get extremely wealthy from a worn-out, beaten-up example of a 2,000-wide AM penny mistake, but it will command a premium if you discover one on the lower end that has been through a lot of abuse. Should you be able to recognize the, depending on how much someone wants a low-grade specimen of one of these pennies, you might probably receive anywhere from $5 to $20 for a coin with a wide AM and the correct spacing of the initials FG on the reverse side. As we move up the grading stages, we can observe some really steep price increases, with an MS-68 example reaching a maximum of $8,000. You might very well be talking about $1,000 or more in coins if you were to locate one of these and it scored any higher. Purchasing an uncirculated item is likely your best bet at locating one of them and having it graded in that high-grade condition. Dot roll. Not that there aren't 2,000 pennies in circulation that will score in the mint state range, but these bad guys are often best pulled from an uncirculated roll if you want to score higher than an MS-65, and you could be able to make a respectable profit if you can find one for a reasonable price and spot some of these mistakes. How do you guys feel about the penny air that was released in 2000? If you ever came across one, or any of the coins I talked about in this video, please let me know in the comments below. What would you do? I'd be curious to know. Furthermore, I would really, I would be grateful if you could give that a big thumbs up. I believe that about covers everything for now, guys. If you're new, please subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you can see my new work as it is released. So, everyone, please go now and have a good one until the next one. How's it going, everybody? Daner here with Coins of Rosie, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the most rare and valuable coins in Canada. Today we're going to be discussing a rare Canadian penny air from the year 1999 that can make you some decent money. Although the Canadian penny was discontinued for circulation in the year 2013, there is still a good chance you might find some floating around in your pocket change, or there may be a few sitting in your change jar. Little known to most, there is a rare error that you can look for on your 1999 Canadian pennies that can add a pretty substantial premium. In this video, we will explore the historical context surrounding the production of these rare and valuable one-cent coins and delve into why they hold such importance in Canadian numismatic history. Additionally, we will discuss any distinguishing and identifying features, their significance among collectors, and also the potential value if you happen to own or find a legitimate example. Before I do get into this, I would really appreciate if you guys would smash that thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new, and also ring that bell notification so you can stay up to date with my new content as it is being released. And make sure to stay to the end of the video if you'd like to find out how much you could get for this rare penny error, if you do happen to have one. And then, without any further ado, what do you say we get right into it and discuss the 1999 double 999 Canadian penny? Let's get it, guys. Throughout the 2000s, there was an ongoing debate about discontinuing the production of the Canadian penny due to its high production cost and perceived lack of utility. In mid-2010, the Standing Senate Committee on National Finance initiated a study on the future of the one-cent coin. By December 14, 2010, the Senate Finance Committee recommended removing the Canadian penny from circulation, citing a century of inflation had eroded its value and relevance. Despite a 2007 survey showing that only 37% of Canadians used pennies, the government continued to produce approximately 816 million pennies per year, amounting to 24 pennies per Canadian. The Canadian Mint had to produce larger quantities of pennies as news of their discontinuation spread and they disappeared from circulation, with many being hoarded away. In the year 2011, the Canadian Mint minted approximately 1.1 billion pennies more than double the 2010 production of 486.2 million. In late 2010, the Senate Finance Committee members estimated that on average, each Canadian had up to 600 pennies hoarded away, which had removed many from circulation. On March 29, 2012, the federal government announced in its budget that the penny would be withdrawn from circulation in the fall of 2012. 
The decision was based primarily on the penny's production cost of 1.6 cents. The final penny was minted on May 4, 2012, at the Royal Canadian Mint's Winnipeg facility at and was entrusted to the Bank of Canada Museum in Ottawa. Existing pennies remain legal tender indefinitely, but were withdrawn from general circulation on February 4, 2013. Starting on that day, the mint began melting down an estimated 35 billion pennies that were in circulation on this day. Google marked the occasion with a special Google Doodle. Cash transactions in Canada are now rounded to the nearest multiple of 5 cents, which is based on the total bill, with totals ending in 1 or 2 rounded down to 0, totals ending in 3, 4, 6 or 7 rounded to 5, and totals ending in 8 or 9 cents rounded up to 10. Now let's briefly discuss double dyes and machine doubling. Double dyes occur during the dye making process, which results in dramatic doubling on every coin struck from that dye. This is due to the process of creating the coin dye, which often involves multiple impressions from a working hub. If the hub or die shifts during this process, the finished die features two distinct impressions with separation between them, resulting in a double design, letters, or digits. There's also mechanical doubling, also known as strike ejection shelf, or shift doubling. This occurs when the die strikes a planchette and moves slightly or bounces during the striking process, which creates a flat shelf-like doubling effect. The effect is different on each of the coins struck and is considered a striking error rather than a variety. Understanding the differences and nuances between these types of doubling is important for coin collectors to accurately identify genuine varieties. Now, the 1999 Canadian Penny Air is a fascinating anomaly for Canadian coin collectors and enthusiasts alike. This error is characterized by machine doubling specifically affecting the final three digits of 999 and the date of 1999 on the reverse of the coin. Now, to identify this error or anomaly, you need to closely examine the date of 1999 on the reverse side of the penny. Machine doubling, also known as strike doubling, typically occurs when the die strikes the planchette more than once due to die movement or misalignment during the striking process process. In the case of this 1999 Canadian Penny Air, the doubling on the final 999 digits appears as a slightly shadowed or blurred effect. Unlike genuine double die errors, where the doubling is part of the die itself, machine doubling results in a flat appearance without clear separation between the original digits and the doubled ones. The occurrence of errors like this could stem from various factors during the minting process. One possibility is a die clash, where the obverse and reverse dies come into contact without a planchette between them. This collision causes the die to receive an unintended impression, leading to the doubling effect on subsequent strikes. On the other hand, it could be die wear or misalignment that could contribute towards the doubling that you can find on this coin. Understanding the potential causes of this error can shed some light on the complexity of the minting of coin and the challenges that are faced by minting facilities. Despite rigorous quality control measures, errors such as this can easily slip through production, making them highly sought after by collectors in the numismatic market. The value of these air coins can vary based on several factors, such as the severity of the air, the coin's condition, collector demand, and market trends. While low-grade examples of this air may not be worth too much above face value, pristine examples with pronounced doubling can fetch higher prices. Among collectors eager to add such a unique piece to their collection, it is super essential for you to carefully examine the penny from this year to identify its unique characteristics. While the most notable error is the doubling on the 999 date, variations in machine doubling or other minor errors may also be present. Each coin tells a story, and understanding the nuances of these errors enhances the appreciation of this amazing hobby. Now, before we get into the exact values for the 1999 Canadian penny with doubling on the final three digits, some of the details and specifications of any of these are off and may indicate that the coin is not authentic or legitimate. Now, the mintage figure for the 1999 Canadian penny, this is without a P mint mark. The only way that you can get the Canadian P mint mark penny is out of a proof set. Now, the mintage figure for the 1999 circulation Penny is 1,089,625,000, so that is a massive mintage figure for a Canadian coin. 
Usually Canadian coins will have much lower mintage figures than their American counterparts, and when they do make so many of a coin, it makes your chances of being able to find errors and varieties a lot better. Now this coin is composed of copper-plated zinc. It has a weight of 2.25 grams, a diameter of 19.05 mm, has a thickness of 1.5, edge is plain, it has a die axis and metal alignment, as is the standard for most Canadian, British, and Australian coins. The obverse was designed and engraved by Dora de Pedri Hunt and the Reavers by G. Kruger Gray. Now, unfortunately, as I did mention before, this coin does not have a very high premium on the low end. If you find a beat-up and worn example, it is not worth too much above face value, but it is still a pretty cool error to identify, and I would still hold on to them honestly because some people might want to have them just so they can have some cool errors in their collection. But as you start to get into the mint state range, it can be worth some decent money. Just to give you guys an idea, the highest price you can get for the $19.99 Canadian penny without any errors or varieties is somewhere around $1.65 for an MS67. Now, if you can identify the doubling on the final three digits of the date, it can be worth up to $1.100. So it is worth almost twice as much as the regular variety and the value will only go up as time goes on. Depending on the severity of the doubling, it could add a premium to the coin. And if it scored any higher than MS67, you could easily be talking a dollar two hundred to dollar five hundred piece. Now, what do you guys think about the Canadian 1999 pennies with doubling on the final three digits in the date? What would you do if you ever found a legitimate example, or if you ever have found any of the coins that I discussed in this video? Please let me know down in the comments. I would love to know. Also, I would really appreciate if you guys would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new and also ring that bell notification so you can stay up to date with my new content as it is being released. But I think that is pretty much going to do it for this one, folks. So until the next one, everybody peace out and have a good one, y'all.